Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is High Fantasy Writing and my name is April. An issue in writing that has gotten a lot of attention over the past years has actually been diversity in writing. So traditionally, who was able to get their um, books published, which types of stories were being told was very, very limited. Um, only certain types of people could get published, only certain types of stories were allowed to be told. I mean, you can even look at the literal laws in some areas. Like there was a law in Hollywood that said that a positive representation of a same-sex couple was legally not allowed to be shown in movies. So things like that really limited the amount of diversity that we saw in our storytelling. We got the same type of protagonist, the same race of protagonist, the same gender, the same um, sexuality, and a lot of the same world viewpoints in our protagonists and kind of also in the side characters. Now we would get token side characters like the gay best friend, the black friend, that type of thing, but they were never front and center and their characters usually didn't get fleshed out a lot. Usually they were kind of just left as a stereotype, the trope in horror movies where the black guy dies first, and there wasn't a lot of diversity within there. And so in the past couple of years, I guess like two decades or something at this point, it's really been attention has been brought to that issue and people have been calling for more diverse stories, more diverse casts of characters. So it's not just one race, one ethnicity, one culture that's being represented in the book, but rather a wide array of them. And so that has led to a whole bunch of really great progress. A lot more people have been allowed into the publishing sphere, into media spheres in general. We have more black authors that are gaining more renown because their books are pushed more um, in the media, in um, the publishing company is pushing those stories more so they don't kind of put their story out there. It gets no media coverage and so it just kind of Nobody even hears that there was a story <laughs> written that they should be reading that was more diverse. Now there are so many really great videos out there and articles about why diversity in your stories is extremely important. Why it's kind of not the greatest writing practice to just have a whole bunch of white people <laughs> in your cast of characters. This can be very, um, prominent in especially fantasy. I feel like contemporary does a lot better job at um, showing a whole bunch of diversity because we live in a diverse society and contemporary is in our time <laughs> frame. So it's just, it would be very glaringly obvious if there was only white people in your like, I don't know, all American high school, that's like a rom-com contemporary story. It would be a lot more noticeable than say like in a fantasy where a lot of people fall back on the excuse, well, it's set in medieval Europe, there isn't as much easy travel. So it would be a lot more homogeneous in cultures and races. Now, number one, that's just not historically accurate. There was a wide array of diversity in all of these different, even ancient societies. They did intermingle, they did um, move, they did travel. There were like tons of different ethnicities, cultures, religions, languages spoken and races in even medieval societies. That's number one. Number two, is this is a fantasy? Like, you can have your world have been created and developed completely differently. So the fact that you have chosen to keep it very homogeneous and white, because we know 
that it's always just homogeneous white in these fantasy stories that kind of reflects when people read it it reflects on you and what your ideal world is unless you have specifically set out to write a story where the fact that they are a very closed off society they are very homogeneous um, where that is kind of the central point of the story or where it becomes a point of contention in the story that everyone is the same um, unless that's the case it's usually best practice to include diversity because it just makes your story more interesting it makes it more engaging it makes it not so boring and that it's like ah here's another person who looks exactly like this other person and has the exact same culture and belief systems and languages and religions it's like great everybody in your story is a carbon copy of one another it's very boring so thankfully there has been a very huge surge of let's get more diversity in our stories and especially fantasy when you are creating cultures what type of cultures are you creating from scratch from your own mind to inhabit your world now what i was just talking about before where you should include different cultures different races different religions different sexualities different worldviews i'm going to consider that macro diversity i'm not sure exactly if there is a technical term for what i'm um trying to get across so macro diversity kind of sums it up the best for me so this type of diversity in my mind is okay you have a fantasy world you have the main kingdom that perhaps is more european based but you also have neighboring countries you have countries who they do trade with across the oceans that are very different culturally different races different religions different um, government styles that sort of thing um, just making sure that you're not writing your entire story based on one singular type of culture or race or religion but making sure that there's like in real world terms there's the England of your world but there's also the Italy of your world there's also the new world of your world there's also the india of your world there's also all of the different african nations of your world that sort of thing that to me is macro diversity you at least on the surface have different groups of people who have different ways of living and have developed differently due to their different locations now this is of course becoming much more common more books um, are including different cultures races things like that in their stories however something that i have noticed with this trend of okay let's include more diversity is a disparity in the attention given to each culture so it can be all well and good that you have your England nation, but how do you portray the other cultures in your book? A lot of times the main culture of the story where the protagonist has grown up, perhaps the protagonist is a part of this culture by birth, by raising, that culture is a lot of times very detailed very in depth it has a lot of nuance to it it maybe has a whole bunch of contradictions that make it really interesting to look at um say the culture super relies on a group of people for whatever service and the, this group of people is physically the only group of people who can do this service perhaps magicians and they are the only ones who can perform these tasks that are necessary for this type of culture to thrive and yet those same magicians are um, persecuted and they're treated awfully it's seen as a bad thing to be a magician 
those ideas are contradictory, but they're very realistic and they're very interesting to look at when you're reading. So a lot of times the main culture gets all of this care taken when crafting this fantasy culture. And you can see how interesting and intricate it is and everybody in the culture has a different view of that culture. Say it's a patriarchal society, some people are going to be all about it, some people are going to be ambivalent about it, and some people are going to be actively fighting against it, all within the same culture. Now when you go to the side cultures, the cultures that aren't the main focus of the story, or aren't the cultures of the main characters of the story, sometimes this nuance and detail can get left out. The other culture of your fantasy world that you have placed in for diversity might just kind of be this huge bland monolith. A lot of times it comes in the form of, oh, there's this other nation out there that has come in, they're super militaristic, they're super strict in their caste system, everybody believes the exact same thing. And it's like, you never get to see any depth or nuance to this other culture. So technically you can be like, but look, this other culture is all black people. I have diversity. But then when you look at the culture that these people are a part of, it's not, there's not much care taken when crafting that culture for your book. It's just bland, everybody believes the same thing. Maybe they're tribes people. They run around in the loincloths and they are hunters and they don't care about book learning. And that's all the development you give them. And then it just turns into this bland or sometimes insulting stereotype of a real world culture even though you're trying to show like, oh, look, there's different people in my world. It's not all just the white Europeans in my story. There's other people. <laughs> but how much do you as the author even know about this other group of people that you have placed into your book and you're giving page time to? Do you know the intricacies of their culture? Do you know that there are entire sects that might disagree with the main culture? Do you know that there are some maybe revolutions going on in, I mean, either culture? There's always groups ready, ready for revolution, ready to change the status quo. When you include secondary cultures, I think it's very important to include what I'm calling micro diversity. So yes, we have the European style culture, we have the, say, African style culture in your stories, but is there depth within those cultures, within those separate things? Are there characters who absolutely love aspects of their culture while simultaneously despising other aspects? Are there aspects of that culture that people within that culture disagree upon? Look at any group in the real world. People within that group have different opinions. There are different sects of Christianity. You would think, okay, there's, <laughs> there's this religion. It's all based on this one book. So everybody's gonna believe the same thing. No. They, they don't. They don't, all Christians don't believe the exact same thing. There are so many different sects of Christianity. Some areas they overlap. Some different denominations really overlap and they're almost indistinguishable from one another. But people specifically say, no, I'm a Baptist or no, I'm a Methodist. And it's very important to them. So even though they're all part of the same culture, even the same subgroup of the culture, they're not all going to feel the same way about everything. 
And that's why I think micro, di micro diversity in your stories is so important to really add depth to these fantasy cultures that you're including. Or if you're writing real world, making sure that if you include somebody from a real life culture that might not be your own, that you're giving the same care and attention to that culture as you are the culture that you're much more familiar with. Because it just naturally comes out if you have been a part of the culture. Um, it just naturally comes out all the nuances and contradictions within the culture and you don't think anything of it because it's just so normal to you. But when you are talking about writing about producing something about a culture that is not your own, not so ingrained in you that you have been raised in, a lot of that nuance can be lost. So I think it's incredibly important when you're writing any type of story that you first include that macro diversity, that different races, cultures, sexualities, religions, belief systems, but you also include the micro diversity within those separate groups, cultures, sexualities, not every gay person thinks the same thing as another gay person. A trans person is going to have a very different life experience than a lesbian person is going to have. And understanding that just throwing in that token character or that token culture isn't enough to really take care of what you're trying to say with your story and making sure every single one of your characters and cultures and world building elements is as nuanced and intriguing and meaningful as it can be. When you just throw in a whole bunch of stereotypes or just very flat, no depth whatsoever to these cultures into your story, your reader is gonna notice and your readers might roll their eyes and be like, wow, haven't seen that one before. Or, oh, that seems like a cool culture that I want to learn more about. And in all 6,000 pages of this series, I'm not seeing any more depth to this culture. While the main white culture is very fleshed out very in-depth. There's a whole bunch of nuance in there, but this culture filled with people of color is lacking. So when you are writing, just keep in mind that macro diversity is great, but micro diversity is really what makes your story stand out. It's really what makes your characters and your cultures and your world stand out to readers and make them want to know more, make them feel like this is a real place that they could actually go to, which in my opinion is kind of the goal of writing a lot of the time, is making your world so fascinating that the reader wants to know more about it, they want to put themselves in the world, they want to get to know personally each and every character. Some characters it's like, I'm glad that it's not actually me getting to know them, but they can be very fascinating and very awful people. <laughs> so um, that's kind of my goal in this video is to help you keep in mind different aspects of world building and your story that sometimes get left behind when the larger, broader conversation of make sure your story is diverse is discussed. Diversity of culture and sexuality and race is very important, but diversity of thought within those cultures is just as important to make sure you're not creating stereotypes, you're not creating monolithic cultures or peoples or anything like that. So I hope this video has given you a couple of different things to think about. Maybe go back and take a look at your manuscript and see what needs to be tweaked, what needs to be changed, what needs to be fleshed out more, kind of go back to the drawing board maybe on some of your fantasy cultures 
or the cultures you have included in your book and I do hope that it makes your writing better and more detailed and nuanced and can connect to more people. I do look forward to seeing you in my next video. If you did find this video helpful, give it a like, um, subscribe to my channel, give a comment if you have anything um, you'd like to talk about in the microdiversity realm of writing and share it with anybody who you think um, would really benefit from it. This is High Fantasy Writing, my name is April, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!